Funk was sharing that we, we had sometimes, and for me it's the same as the rest of you, there's sometimes that I feel the presence of the Lord more than I do at other times. And I can't blame anybody except me. If I don't feel him some days not as much, it's not God's fault. He's there. He's with us. He promises that. And he's never broke one promise out of the Bible. And I think last week I shared that somebody counted the, the, the promises in the Bible and come up with 7,474, 7, I think. Is, you know, whether they're completely right or not, there's a lot of promises in the Bible. And God, to date, has not failed to answer every one of those promises. He keeps his word. Uh, he is faithful to do that. And so today, uh, these songs much to my shame, are seemingly closer, and I can, I can hear with clarity and, and everything on these songs today. Uh, that's just shameful that I must not have been in tune as much with the Holy Spirit in other times. So, but it is awesome. It is wonderful to have that feeling today, and it feels like it's, a, uh, it's universally here in the, in the, in the church today where we are obviously hearing from the Lord today. His presence is felt, is seen, and I would just would ask that it would continue to go through the remainder of our time here today as we listen to the word. I wanna thank you, Shirley, for those songs. I don't know that the songs that you had picked out were, wouldn't have been just as good as those. Uh, however, we had no problem with the ones that you picked in, in uh, relief of those. So they were very good, good songs. Uh, we will get things ironed out. I think that we have ink or, or whatever it is coming uh, for our printer. It's ordered. It's ordered. It's, it should be here. We ought to have it and uh, just bear with uh, some of these little problems that, that we have from time to time. Uh, it's obvious today that God can work around problems. In fact, sometimes I think these problems will make us uh, pay attention to him more and we'll be more focused on him at times. I had a, uh, when I was going to school to learn how to preach at uh, college, our homiletics teacher told us, he said, if you want an announcement to be made, to be heard and remembered, goof it up and repeat it. They will remember that one with all the other ones that are spoken beautifully. It's the one that you had to stumble around with and get it right. So in all of our bumbling around that we do, and, and uh, we don't do it on purpose, it's just error in our lives, and we're certainly not perfect, but we serve a perfect God that is able to take all of our blunders and turn them into a better day than we might have had if everything would have went just like clockwork. So God is with us, he is with you, during the week, and uh, uh, take heart to know that he is there, then all we have to do is just think about him, and he's there with us in our thoughts, in our life, and so uh, that's where we're at with him. Uh, I'd like to read the text today. It's, it's going to be in, in uh, Genesis today, chapter 41, verses 41 through 40. Uh, 41 through 44. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen clothing and hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had Joseph ride in the chariot, reserved for the second in command. And wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, kneel down. So Joseph put, so Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. As we read this story, uh, I don't know about you, but I've read through this story lots of times. 
And as you read, you just see how much worse can it get? How much does this man who, who was not doing anything to deserve the treatment that he was getting, how much worse can this thing get? And so when we get to this place in the story where we, we can almost see it coming as we read the story and we see that, that he give a dream for the cupbearer and he was given back into the good graces with the Pharaoh and Joseph uh, as a passing statement to him just before he parted with him, said, now when things go well for you, when you're before Pharaoh, don't get, forget to mention me in here. Well, we know that he forgot him again, and, and, but we knew that just in another little bit, the Pharaoh himself had a dream. And before the Bible even tells us that Joseph could interpret that, we, was, we would be raising our hand like a little kid in class saying, well, Joseph's in prison. He can, he can, he's the one that interprets the dreams. He can do that for you. And just as that happened, the cupbearer says, oh, yeah, I remember uh, my, my sin that I have had here. For the, we, I was in prison with this guy, and he interpreted my dream, and it come exactly as, it, as he said it would. Well, the Pharaoh was pretty disturbed, and so he called Joseph in to see if that was the case. And we know that Joseph interpreted his dream, and uh, he actually had two dreams, and they were all in one. It was important enough that, that he had two dreams back-to-back -back that meant the same exact thing, and, and he interpreted how it was to be and, and what God was doing for him. And, and Joseph then is at the reading of this text here today. The title of the message today is Rags, From Rags to Riches. Joseph, just hours before, was a prisoner in the dungeon at the Pharaoh's jail, dungeon. He was unshaved, dirty, beard, and, and, and now here he is spoken from the Pharaoh directly to Joseph that he was going to put him in charge of all of Egypt. And if you read that and listen to the text today, you can see in there the different things that now is in Joseph's life compared to what it was just prior to that. There's another scripture that I want us to look at right now, and it's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. This would be like the the parallel scripture in the, in the New Testament of that same scripture I just read in, in Genesis. This is Paul speaking, and he said, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. And if you read one place Paul gets to rambling and even says some kind of, if anybody can brag, let me, I can brag even more. And then he, at one place in there, he, he went into all of the different things that he had suffered. Multiple, five shipwrecks, I think, and he was beaten with the rods a couple times, almost to death, stoned uh, once or twice. And he did all those things. But over the years, Paul had opportunity to have lots. He was blessed with much. And then another time, he doesn't have hardly anything. So Paul is saying here, it, toward the end of his, he's getting close to the end of his, his, his life, and he's saying here that he learned how to adjust to every situation in this life. And I want us, to, that's something here that, that we see in Joseph, his story as well. This is a very important that we not only learn how to handle living with nothing or almost nothing, but to live with plenty, that's a whole different story. That's, that's another set of temptations in itself right there. Joseph's story here has quite a bit, and we have been looking at this for a while, 
And, and he has something here for us today that I think we need to, to look at. I know for a church, for us, if somebody amongst us was able to be just completely blessed, I mean, God just poured out his blessings on them beyond measure. The person with the uh, authority would be, have been elevated. All of us in here would, would recognize their awesome authority. We would recognize their wealth and their power and, and, the, the, and, and the finance. Everything's there. Everything's lined up. They have everything that they would have, could possibly hope for or want. How would we welcome them into our fellowship, into our church? This is something that we may not have even thought about. I, this was not the main thought that when I read this that that came to me, but I got to thinking about this, and we're a little bit selective sometimes as to who we will embrace that comes into our fellowship. If somebody comes in here that's so, so poor, they don't have anything at all, sometimes we hold them off a little bit, because maybe they smell, maybe they're dirty, I don't know, and, and we can hold them off a little. And we're not embracing them very much, so I can understand that a little bit, but there's another group of people that we don't embrace very good. Joseph, after he's been lifted to that lofty place, might be somebody like that in our congregation that had the same fortune from, from the Lord, to, to be richly blessed, that we would hold them off thinking, who are they, and how did they get that, and, and they don't deserve it any more than I do. You know, I'm sure Joseph had people in the Egyptian, normal, everyday life Egyptians, and even some that were in the court system, and in Pharaoh's care, a little lower, that would have obviously thought maybe they ought to be promoted instead of somebody that was just in jail just a few minutes ago. Something that we have to consider when we think about these kinds of people is that they, if they elevated themselves, if they put themselves and done everything that they could do to get in that position, they probably didn't deserve it. But Joseph, if we have seen, we've been saying amen, and I think all of us here would, would confess, because we have the whole story, that Joseph was ready. We, in fact, when it happened that he was promoted, we said, finally, amen, praise God that he's, he made it out of the dungeon and now has got what he deserves. In real life, we don't know people that, that well, and so we will hold people off. Somebody that God blesses that could be in our congregation may be able to just do what we could never do before with finance. Somebody could be just richly blessed and, and if we hold them off and, and for, forsake them and, and don't hold, take them into our fellowship and, and treat them like, like a brother and sister in the Lord, we have not been good to that person. We have not pleased God in that. And, and the blessing that, that we see that happened in Joseph's situation couldn't happen in our congregation because we wouldn't embrace that. We wouldn't embrace So we've got to recognize that when God elevates somebody, who are we to say they're not worthy? From the reveal dreams to him and show him some big things that he was going to be doing, it was just his young age that he didn't know how to control that. He, he wanted to tell all of what was happening in his life, and, and as a result, he, he ticked his brothers off big time. And, and, and Joseph, without his, any input in it, his dad was treating him special, which didn't help his relationship with his brothers at all. He made him a special coat. You know, here's my special son. He's better than all the rest of you. It basically, was rubbing it in their nose. And, and, and they couldn't handle it. But Joseph wouldn't have not been that guy necessarily that was wanting to promote all that. Joseph had a close relationship with God. We know that because when he got to Potiphar's house, somebody that was just a wishy-washy Christian would not have resisted Potiphar's wife. My guess is she was probably very beautiful and, and, and seductive and, 
and there would have been no nothing to hold hold a, uh, the flesh back from that. We have to do our closeness to the Lord to keep us so that we know that God is a God that would be offended if I do this. And he told Potiphar's wife, it's not going to happen. I can't sin against my God. So he had to have a tremendous relationship with God. So he passed the tests. The same, the second test that I think he passed was that bad memories need not defeat us. What happened in the past is in the past. We, I serve a God that's able to change things in a moment to something good. So whatever was in the past was bad. I'm going to leave it in the past, and I'm not going to bring it up no more. Joseph was able to know and pass the test to know that what was in my past is in the past. We put it in that area that we don't visit. We leave it there and know that what's ahead is, is what's important and that his God could make a difference, which we see him making a difference right here. God came good on all of what he said he would do. And third, with great blessings, or great blessings need not disqualify us from service. We can't get so wealthy or well-to-do that God can't use us. Now, I'm, I'm, I think we don't have whole lot of wealthy people in this world in God's kingdom I mean there's a handful scattered here and there that are just super wealthy but I, I, I just speaking for myself today if God gave me what he gave Joseph here it would go to my head probably financially speaking I would be able to get whatever I wanted the things that I needed I could get without any problem wouldn't have to go to the Lord and say you know Lord I, I've got this inspection coming and I need tires for the car but we still need groceries and, and, and so he would he works it all out and we stay close to the Lord in that regard but if I was wealthy I could sure I could bypass that prayer that says Lord I need this we would sell God like the sign used to be down the road over here I got this you, you, I'm thank you for what you've done for me and elevated me to this lofty state but no thanks anyway. I, you use that on somebody else. I'm, I'm where I need to be. I, nothing could shake me loose now. And so that's, I think there's people that, that he could have blessed with finance, but we can't handle it. He, I, can't, I couldn't handle it. I do better with, with, with little. I, I can't abuse little much. And so if I could abuse it, I might. So I don't know. I thank God that he's for... for when I have plenty and when I have very little. It's the same for us. We've learned how to do that. He knows our heart. He knows us. So I, I don't know. Maybe there's others in here that are similar. That maybe we're not rolling in money because we couldn't handle it. We would turn away from the Lord. What's better? To go to heaven broke? Or, or go to heaven or get to the door and not be allowed in because we had so much that we didn't use it? We, we abused it. We, we use it on stuff that, that wouldn't amount to anything. And God said, knocked on us and said, so-and-so needs a little over here, over there. And we, we it's mine. I, I work for this, you know. No. God gave us everything that we have. And so that's kind of where we're at. Joseph, what an awesome man Joseph was. We can't hardly find a loophole in his life that was bad. There's no between the lines. We can't read in anything bad in his life. The worst thing that I can see in Joseph's life so far is that he asked the cupbearer, when you, when you get before the king, I want you to give, put a good word in for me. That's the only thing that I've seen him do that was even remotely, and I think he, could, he had right to ask the cupbearer to give a good word for him after, this, it wasn't 13 years yet, it was is about 11 years in prison or in this place. He had a right maybe to do that. But that's the only we see him elevating himself to try to do anything on his own to get out of this mess that he was in. And I know Joseph was a man like us. He was a person just like us that's following the Lord. And I know the flesh was pulling at him to give in to Potiphar's wife 
It was given, it was, it was hard for the flesh to say, uh, let me have vengeance on your, your brothers. I'll take care of them. You just do what I've asked you to do. And so Joseph had to deal with all of that and then the absolute uh, power. So to me, one of the hardest things, the lessons that would be the hardest to learn and, and I see it at kind of the ending of Joseph's 13 years. So he didn't try to start with this lesson at the beginning when he was thrown in the pit. He did this at the end when he was just about ready to be released. This is like, if you can pass this one more test, you won't be able to believe what I got for you when you pass this test. It's almost like a young kid that just finished college and in their and the career is all ahead of him, and, the, and the, he's already got a job lined up. The guy says, as soon as you graduate, I got a position for you right here. And, and in that position is just responsibility that is paid. Uh, just you know, The guy's going to be well-to-do from now on if he does good for this, this employer. That's what Joseph had here. He had that. And Joseph passed the test. He could handle the money. He gave out the, the food on, a, on an even basis. He was fair to everybody. Earned wealth is God's reward. God rewards our effort. He tells us what we are going to have if we serve him. We do follow his commands and do that. We looked at a, the last lesson, I think. The last message that we looked at was God blesses obedience. Joseph obeyed. Joseph obeyed. Joseph obeyed. Until his character was so refined that God, without a doubt, knew that when he turned him loose in Egypt, that he was not going to treat people poorly, that he was not going to let the money go to his head, and he wasn't going to hoard the grain and keep it just for his family or just for Egypt. He gave it to all the people. And I think Joseph was sitting in that, his position, shortly after he was starting to distribute grain, and he seen this country come, with some representatives come from this country, this come from this country, and he was probably wondering, when is my family going to come for grain. Joseph recognized his brothers immediately. Immediately upon arrival, immediately he recognized them. He played with them a little bit, but he, did, he was distributing grain honestly and fairly and actually favored them by putting their money back in their sacks to take home. Which, which I don't know if Joseph knew what he was doing, to make them squirm even more when they got to their place in the evening, went to feed their horses or their donkey, and found, oh, the money's in here. They're going to think we stole it. And, and it was already being treated a little harsh from, from Joseph, just to, just to, you know, I don't know what he, he was just giving this little fleshly jag on them to show them what he was doing. First of all, to pass these tests the test that Joseph had to pass, the test that we have to pass, we cannot do it without an absolute, close, personal relationship with God. That's the, of all the things that you could learn from the lesson today and everything in our life, nothing is going to come to us that's of any value to us without a close relationship with God. Joseph trusted God completely. He, he didn't remind Pharaoh, you know, hey, you know, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that interpreted your dreams. Don't forget that. I can make all of this happen for you. No, he was humble and he gave all the credit to God for what happened for, in Joseph's life. You, you would think that after sitting with Joseph, that Joseph didn't know anything on his own that God's going to interpret that or reveal that to me. He's going to reveal this to me. He's going to tell me what to do. And, and, and Joseph's right. 
I came here to this church, and I was in a, the, the group of people that wanted me to come, and, and Teresa and I were sitting together in the, with the committee, and they asked me, well, what's your plan? I didn't have a plan. I, I didn't even know Hughes. I, I didn't know what to do. I just said that I'm going to follow God closely, and he's going to tell us what we need to know to do. That's basically what, what we said. And, and I don't, you know, some, some in the group may have thought, well, that's not a very good answer. But some might have thought about it a little more when they went home and thought, you know, that might not be a bad plan, just to follow God. That, and I was, fortunately, I don't have a lot of money, so I can't get in trouble with that. I don't have a lot of brains. I'm not real wise when it comes to worldly knowledge. I don't know the, I don't even know how to work with, if you asked me to hook up that camera, I couldn't do it. I, I, I'm smart enough to go find somebody that can do it. <laughs> and so I'm not smart enough to do this. And I found out after about a year here, I, I, I write all my messages out. You know, I, I grabbed that book one time just to see what I spoke. Went through the, I didn't go through them real hard, but I just looked at the titles and the, went down through. And I thought, wow, that's genius. God just, he, he had a plan that I, I just preached what he asked me to preach every Sunday. I didn't know he had a, a, I was preaching a series. I just preached what he asked me to do. Joseph here is telling Pharaoh, I can't interpret the dream. God is, a, is the one that reveals those things to me. I'm just relaying what God told me. Joseph somehow maintained that, that, that humbleness that you need to have to, to still, even in the face of all this wealth and power, to just turn it over to God and say, I'm here for you to use. I don't know how to do this. You just do it for me, and I'll be obedient, and I'll do it. You tell me what to do, and I'll do it. I'll just be your hands and feet and your mouthpiece. And guess what? We have a beautiful story here of probably, probably the, the best example of somebody that was obedient to God in the entire Bible for his entire life. We have David and all them, and you know, they're awesome, but Joseph here, David didn't resist Bathsheba. He had to deal with that. He had scars for that. His family suffered for that. Joseph didn't have to deal with scars from Potiphar's wife. He can stand before God pure and holy and know that everything that, he, that he's doing from here on I don't have to go over scars and all this and mess. You know, we, we don't. Joseph was being prepared. He listened to God, and he did exactly what God wanted him to do. He knew, somehow, as he was being mistreated in, in Potiphar's situation, in, with his brothers in the pit, with all of these horrendous problems that would have probably shaken any of us to our core, he knew that God was going to bring him on the other side a winner. He didn't know he was going to be this much of a winner, I don't think, but he knew that this was going to turn out for God's glory at the, at the end of this. How about us today? I'm just going to end with this thought. Can you trust God with your life? The answer, obviously, is yes, but it is you to answer that, or all of us to answer that. Can, you, can we trust God with our every detail of our life? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you right now thanking you for this tremendous example from Joseph, a man that, that was close to you and showed us how to survive this life. If we want the very best, from you, we have to be able to give you our full and undivided and love and attention so that we can survive, so that we can not only survive, but thrive and make it to heaven. So we just love you today. We thank you and ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.